Hey guys, this is Eric, and I want to tell more of the history of um, Luna Cycles. And it's hard to tell the story of Luna Cycles without talking about electricbike.com. So I was internet addicted. I was spending eight hours a day researching on the internet on Endlosphere, um, uh, trying to get a bike that would hold up a fast electric bike. I was burning up so many expensive bikes and hobby king uh, batteries and trying out different Chinese batteries, trying to get a bike that was reliable and fast. And it's really tough. If you want something that's good looking and lightweight and is reliable, it's really, really hard. And there were guys on the forums on Endlosphere who were talking about, bragging about their bikes and I would spend Oh man, four or five hours a day reading on these bikes. And I eventually found myself internet addicted and decided that, look, if I'm gonna spend this much time on the internet, I'm gonna at least create content and you know own a site. So I, I, I started electricbike.com. Uh, as I tell in another story how I acquired it, planning on um, something else. But I decided to write an article every couple of days about electric bikes. and. My big passion was building a fast electric bike. And um, in this article, I've, it, it ends up the fast, the 10 fastest electric bikes. It ends up being one of our most popular articles. Um, I documented uh, what was the most famous 10 bikes at the time or the 10 people building fast e-bikes which were built in the garage. So number 10 is Thud. Uh, ironically, I became friends with about half of these guys after this article was written. Thud does these incredible mid drives, and I always love mid drives because they're lightweight. He does RC power bikes. He ended up staying at my house. We went on this magnificent ride to Santa Monica, and he became a part of my life, which is great. Uh, Thud's 45 mile per hour mid drive bike was awesome, and I did a little thing in a video here. And number nine is uh, Greasy Pants. Now, Greasy Pants, 50 mile per hour electric bike. The reason why I want to mention this one right now is that at the time that I wrote this article, this is one of the most famous electric bikes on the planet because he did a do-it-yourself um, book on how to build your own e-bike and that was one of the most popular websites or you know materials out there how to build your own fast do-it-yourself e-bike and his name's Greasy Pants and that book was this shit back then it was probably the most popular um, website or whatever you want to call it it was a pay per book Thing. I don't know what happened to that book. You can, can look for it. Greasy Pants, 50 mile per hour. Here's do it yourself manual on how to build an electric bike. Because I don't think people were sharing that much. It, I mean, I was spending months on Endless Sphere to try to get a little bit of information. You really, it's really like finding a needle in a haystack a lot of times and finding uh, who's really building the big stuff. And these, these are the guys. Recumbents did this 50 mile an hour trike. He would get us all by claiming he's, he's using $900. 3220 Astro motors and Castle controllers and uh, achieving these incredible speeds and he would claim amazing efficiency numbers like you know I forget it was like uh, 17 or 20 watts per mile or some crazy watt hours per mile like some unattainable number that it's kind of like you know you don't know if he's telling the truth or not but I ended up partnering with him or uh, uh, paying for him to help me develop one of my first electric bikes giving him a lot of development money and my first electric bike that I built seriously to try to put in production the rhino bike now had a 3220 astro motor on it and i tried to build it take it to pike's peak and take on the optibike guys optibike was the coolest thing or the fastest production bike in the country they're winning optibike every the races every year and it's like a 30 mile an hour bike i bought one of those used and it sucked but this guy would really spout like these really beautiful CNC drives and because of him I ended up spending a couple of summers in a machine shops and wanting a machine shop of my own which you know I ended up getting and you know to build an electric I learned from him to build an electric bike you got to be kind of like an artist and I again I, I, I really emphasized mid drives and here's one of my heroes to this day I would put him higher on this list this is Degati he lives in Taiwan He's kind of a secret in the e-bike community. He was on the cover of Wired magazine, literally. He's one of two Asians to be on the cover of, Ma of Wired magazine for a, a software uh, a company that he created. This guy's the shit, man. And you, you go and ride this guy's bikes and you realize everybody else is playing with toys. I mean, he had the shit. Like, and after this article, I got to know him because of this article probably. And I, that's why I really do believe in creating content as opposed to just you know, being on a forum or something. Because of this article, I got to meet some of these people and me and him became lifelong friends. And I visited him in Taiwan and dude, got to ride these insane like 60, 70 mile an hour 
you know, 30 pound bikes, 40 pound bikes. To this day, I think, you know, he has the fastest bikes, the fastest, coolest bikes anywhere. Degati was a piece of work. I mean, if you haven't seen the Degati bike, it's like a Ducati with a dog, Degati. This guy, he's the real shit. And his bikes are just absolutely beautiful, fast, lightweight, everything. Zombie's a really interesting cat. I became friends with him recently in the last year. He's visited us a number of times. He does a lot of 3D printing for us. He does a 59 mile, mile per hour hub motor. Now to me, hub motors aren't that interesting, but when they do 59 mile per hour and Zombie's designed the controller, it's pretty cool. Because for me, then and now, I've always thought that you gotta build something, you gotta make, you gotta contribute something. The bike's gotta be beautiful and not just in an easy way. Because it's easy to take, uh, a 50 pound hub motor and put it in the rear of a bike and run massive power to it and the bike weighs a lot of pounds. But, but it's not that interesting, but Zombies is the hub motor that made this list because his hub motors are so cool. He, uh, he, his thing is he does his own controllers. He, I, I believe he's an electronical engineer and he's close with us now, he's a really good guy. Um, I, I, like I said last year, I got to know him. And then uh, Cedric Lynch, I don't know why I put him on this list. As if I was gonna rewrite this list, I'd take it back because he did this Velo that does 60 miles per hour. And, they, and I wanna have a Velo in here because Velos are really interesting. Not Velos, but what do you call the, um, you know, those, uh, you know, where you sit in a, a race car like Pinewood Derby kind of thing. And you know, I, I wanna say there, yeah, Velos. But anyways, uh, he um, would put like a, 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 he had an idea that nobody's capitalized on that if you have a Velo, you can get 60 miles an hour with very, very little power. Uh, you could get to 100 miles an hour with probably 3,000 watts. And uh, once you're cutting through the air, it's everything. Aerodynamics is something that, you know, we haven't really gotten to yet because electric bikes are so primitive, even now today. Like, I wrote this article in 2013 and, and, and it, or 2000, yeah, 2013 or something, and it hasn't changed that much. And then, uh, I, I, I mean, there's a few things like, his bike doesn't count as an electric bike because it doesn't have pedals. That's one of the things I changed. But, it, you know, he was a really eccentric and he developed this really amazing motor called the, um, what was it called? Uh, um, um, uh, Agni, Ag Agni motor, which was the shit for motors back then. Like it put out like 20, 30 horsepower, massive power. Uh, Luke, uh, one of my heroes who's number one on this list, built a bike based on that motor. and. You know, he was making like super high power stuff, electric motorcycle stuff, working on some of the fastest electric motorcycle mo motorcycles in the world, um, I, and also building that Coley bike. Here's Moto Moto. He, uh, uh, you know, became re re we became really close. Um, you know, uh, he was the machine shop that made the Eclipse chainring for us, and his bike is still one of the best fast bikes ever made. I mean, if you guys ever get to see it, you can research it on electricbike.com. It's called a Santa Cruz Astro powered bike. I haven't seen anybody come even close to what Moto Moto could do. And I remember Moto Moto talking about Endosphere and saying that, you know, none of these guys have tools. I have tools. And it made me want to have tools too, because he has a whole machine shop, Moto Moto does, like CNC machines and uh, lays and mills, and he's really good with them. In fact, I ended up getting my own CNC shop and a lot of the guys on this list do have their own machine shops to build bikes like this but I was really inspired by him and I think this bike uh, is one of the most amazing bikes and he doesn't exaggerate this is a Santa Cruz bike this is another bike that's lightweight under 50 pounds he's doing 66 miles per hour here I don't think shit like this has been beat to this day and there's people talking a lot of smack, but you know, guys, you don't see guys doing videos at 66 miles an hour with a lightweight bike. I mean, the the battery on this bike is about this big. You know, it's it's really something special. It's a, a, a V10 Santa Cruz bike. I'd say it weighs less than four pounds in this configuration, doing a 66 mile per hour run. These days, you see guys and they're doing runs with backpack batteries, or they have gigantic batteries. It's just really not that interesting. But when you have a sexy looking bike that I mean, this guy, if I had a thousand of his bikes, I could sell them all in a couple months. And same with the Gattis. There's a few people on this list who really made beautiful bikes and Moto Moto definitely counts as one of them. And uh, Dr. Bass, he's f famous at this time and he's the first person to hit 100 miles per hour on an electric bike. And you know, it's like 
me and uh, you know the guys who spent hundreds of hours on this forum. He's you know a big hero of mine. Still, he's a big my uh, name in my mind. Uh, a pioneer. You know, he's first person to break 100 miles an hour. Uh, this guy is strange. I just realized this when making this video this night. I didn't remember putting Farfly on this list, but that's funny. He he did. And I I don't like Hub Motors. And I I make fun of Farfly and Luke. They're both. You know, probably my best friends right now. And Farful is definitely one of our top, they're both, you know, top engineers on our team. But Farful is like uh, 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 amazing. Like uh, he built an electric airplane this year in one year from kit to electric airplane and flew it, learned how to fly and flew this year. This guy's amazing. And um, I forgot about this, but he created a bike with putting two hum motors together. And I was just talking about how amazing of an engineer this guy is and how good he became. And how did he become so good? By building electric bikes, trying to outrace Luke. When I first met uh, Farfel, he was uh, uh, racing Luke at a big, you know, motorcycle track or something. And he he was in high school, and in a very short time. I mean, it's amazing how young that guy is, and what he can do. He's probably one of the best e-bike engineers in the world, and I'm so proud he's on our team part of us, uh, 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 really, really amazing. And he did it exactly like you're supposed to do it. He, he wanted to race. So when you're racing and you want to beat these guys, you know, you're gonna, if you don't want to embarrass yourself, you better come, come with something. You know, come with what you, what you can really do. And this guy got really, really good at engineering, became a master at SolidWorks, never got an engineering degree. Uh, I, I, to this day, he helps us define what an engineer should be. Like if, if they're an ele electrical engineer, they gotta know at least as much as Farfel because he's a mechanical engineer. If they got it, if they're, a, if they're, a, um, you know, uh, um, if they say they're good at, uh, you know, SolidWorks, they gotta be at least as good as Farfel. If they're as good as programming a machine, they gotta be at least as good as Farfel. This guy is good at everything, and a few things he's just amazingly good at. And um, in fact, he designed this battery pack. The uh, the Naked Wolf Pack, he's, he's really something special. So anyways, and the next one, number one, and this is so funny because I didn't know Farfel at the time that I wrote, wrote this article. I'm so happy he made number two. And I, I, I slammed it. Like I can't believe I made him number two because he doesn't strike me as one of the big names on Inland Sphere, but I knew he was at the racetracks and he was just doing just crazy fast shit. And um, I'm not really into his bikes or Luke bikes because these guys aren't car polish guys. They're not like, I'm more into the Moto Moto bikes and the Dugati bikes. I don't really care about guys who are making 100 mile an hour ugly bikes. And Farfel and Luke will tell you they're not like car polish kind of people. And this is Luke and his famous death bike. And Luke is one of my heroes and became a really good friend and became part of our team and has helped me with battery, starting our own battery factory and helps me in so many ways, helps inspire me and really is the beginning of all of electricbike.com and LunaCycles because without Luke, I don't think I would have ever been interested. He was definitely the most interesting character. I consider him the leader of all electric bikes and he wasn't doing shitty stuff like just, you know, like ugly ass bikes. He was doing stuff that was just super, super fast. Yeah, they're kind of ugly too, but he was just a character in the way he wrote and the way he, he made me love e-bikes and he l did exactly what he intends to do is lead by example and get guys like me to do like things like, you know, build electricbike.com or build a battery factory in the United States or, you know, do things that you don't think, imagine yourself ever doing. But when you have a guy like this as a mentor and as a friend who's kind of like an alien, he's so smart. And, you know, uh, I remember if you guys want a tip, if you really want to get, get good information in the sphere, just go and just read all this guy's posts. That's one of my tricks is I just, uh, that's how you get through all the bullshit. You just, I, I, all the people on this list, I would read everything they ever wrote. And you know, like he, he spilled a lot of stuff on him. The gave away a lot of good information. And one of his main ideas, I know him really well now, is that he really believes in the proliferation of electric bikes and anybody who's doing something great for electric bikes is good in his book. You know, and, and you know, uh, uh, he really, really believes in electrics and, you know, uh, what they do for the environment and this and that. He's a re really, really a, a different type of person. And he, of course, he's number one on this list because, I mean, the bike does, I think this bike ended up doing 130 miles an hour on a drag strip and it's got a zero drivetrain. He ended up changing zero motorcycle by 
designing the battery and really making the zero, bi zero bike really special. And, you know, here he is right here with his, with, uh, I, I photoshopped that. And that kind of fits, like this is written, I don't know, so many years ago, but I, this was before I really got to know Luke. And I'm so proud that he's on a, a alien scape here because when I think of it, you know, that's how I describe Luke. He's just like a freaking alien. He's not normal. And he's just so smart and so different. Such a really special person. But I'm so glad he made the number 10 fast electric bikes. Now, when I did this list, man, it got a ton of traffic and it pu pulled a lot of attention to these guys that nobody ever heard of because it's really not what you think of when you think of 10 fast electric bikes. So what I did is, which I think was fair, is I, I did two lists. These are guys who built these things in the garage. They built them out of pure love. I mean, none of these bikes are sellable, you know, like for a number of reasons. You know, it's really, it's actually really hard and expensive to build a fast electric bike. You know, there's only a handful of people who can do it. And they're not trying to sell these things because, you know, more than likely, people are just going to die on them. You know, I, I, you know, if Minimoto made his Santa Cruz bike, you know, it'd probably cost like ten thousand dollars, and I think it'd sell great. But you know, I, I, you'd have to deal with like killing people and it breaking down. I mean, you know, it's like when something is this fast, or especially when they're lightweight. You know, like the Gotti's bikes. I think I, you know we went and visited them lately in Taiwan, and none of those bikes were running. And you know, the time before everything was running, but it takes a lot of energy to keep this stuff going.